Panel Lords Podcast. It's both of us. It's Kyle and Pierre. That's right. No introductions needed for Kyle because <laughs> nope. I, I already did it. <laughs> yep. So, thank you. Appreciate it. What are we talking about today? We are talking about a very near and dear movie to us. You were crying. I was crying. I was in tears. We were talking about Wakanda forever. Mm. Out of 10, what do you give it? I need to think of something creative. 10 out of 10 blue people. Atlanteans. Are they Atlanteans? Or are they Talakamundo? Yeah. yeah, they changed their name. That's cool, though. They're cool. Blue people, cool. Hell yeah. So I'll give it a 9 exploding water grenades out of 10. Oh, that was creative. Uh, good. Right? That was good. That was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Spoiler. I guess my biggest complaint is I don't love Shuri as much as I thought I would. I don't think you ever really necessarily were going to love her. We're getting a little spicy towards her mm. when she was, you know, rumored to be taking this mantle. For other reasons outside of the movie just her own personal choices i judged her on and continue to possibly judge her on but i liked her better as a side character i don't think that's why it's a nine out of ten i think it's a nine out of ten for me because i want to say maybe just a little too long and a little too jam-packed with sad stuff it was fucking sad like what Definitely the fuck sad. yeah no i had me crying a couple times there for sure and this is spoiler warning for everyone oh, yeah. who Please. hasn't watched it but I think the quiet Marvel logo coming on, the uh, collage, that was yeah. tough. It was like, damn. It opens with the funeral. You were already dripping at that point. Dripping. For me, the funeral was like, all right, we knew they had to do this. I already knew it was coming. I'm not going to be upset by it. I can handle this. But then when they showed his face in the damn Marvel logo, and then from there, it just got worse and worse and worse. Because Emotionally, did... not movie-wise. It was oh, no, movie was movie. fantastic. It just yeah. was like, I have a headache from, like, feeling things. Like, I try not to have feelings, and my head is pounding from feelings. There was a lot of emotion, and I think the actors portrayed that really well. Yeah. Uh, along with the script, it almost didn't even feel like they were really portraying anything other than, like, their true emotions emotions of like how they felt about Chadwick yeah they you know, definitely channeled it like how could you possibly do that role and not let the real emotions out Shuri the actress worked with him so much the first movie she probably did feel like he was like a relative yeah so. you grow into the role a little bit yeah for sure but yeah, so besides that, did they do it perfectly? Yes. Was it maybe a bit much in the sense of like, I'm drained now? Yeah, you beat the shit out of me. Like, I didn't appreciate it. One that stuck out to me, the queen, though. She stole the show. Everything about her, like the dialogue, the emotion, like all of that. She should win something for the acting in that. Especially yeah. like how it opened, which she's like addressing of like, oh yeah, France, we got your people who just tried to like steal our vibranium. So badass. Just such a badass character. And again, spoiler, killed her off. Just one more gut punch. It's like, you're already upset because you know true shit. And then you go into it. It's like, yeah, Shuri is just like destined to be a villain. She's losing people left and right. I feel like they really sold us on the queen. And I think this is the first time that I really like following behind her. Yeah, and no, she... kill her off. I was like, doing that right now? She was a fine leader, the way they portrayed her. You were like, oh, Wakanda's cool. Like, they're okay. She can handle it. And now it's Shuri. Yeah. I mean, I know you leaked the whole plot. And it was... What would you say? 80% correct? Definitely 80%. Yeah. Right. No, my sources are pretty good. <laughs> yeah, really? Uh, which I, I mean, was actually upset about, I will say. I didn't know. think yeah. that would bother me at all. Mm -hmm. But like, I was like, damn, this really is happening. Oh, she's going to the spirit world. Who's she going to see? Now, I, that one I've been well, saying since day one. Since the rumor of Michael B. Jordan reprising his role, I said, that's who she's seeing in the spirit world. She might see other people, but I knew that was the one that was going to get in her head. And the fact that they tied it in to her figuring out, basically becoming Black Panther solely off of revenge, like that was the motivation. They tied that so perfectly. That that's the Black Panther she saw. Like that was such a nice touch. And the fact that yeah. the conversation was quick and then, they showed the last few words of it at the end and it kind of like showed how yeah she did follow him and get shit done for lack of better words but she also at the end the last second did not yeah. murder yeah no more which actually is was, another character. Yeah, who knew? Who knew there was a Namora? <laughs> so Namore wasn't too far off from it, I Nomura. think the spelling would have been exact. I mean... I think I got it. I think yeah. I, I should get extra points for that one. I never was a big Namor person, but... I am I would, now. Yeah, I would say he did a pretty damn good job of being the perfect villain. Like, not evil. The perfect villain of, no, you suck and my people don't. You gotta go. Yeah, you like the character. Like, yeah. you really, like, you can understand him to a certain extent it's like oh you're a little too crazy but i understand and yeah. i think you see that especially in their final battle when where it's like out. he got dried out <laughs> like do you realize that's how they defeated the fish man as yeah. he was commonly called they dried his ass out what a 
perfectly cliche ending. Yeah, air fried. He even said he needed water at the end. Yeah. Oh, did you catch that he said impervious Rex? He did. I was waiting for it. I was like, is yeah. this about to happen? That was cool. They didn't actually say Submariner though either. Like I wanted them to call him that. Mm. I, but... I feel like that's probably going to become a thing, but probably not right now. Right. And again, they, they made you like the character. Like mm -hmm. he was like funny in certain ways. She's like, oh, I'd love to see like your city. He's mm -hmm. like, oh, well, you'd get crushed. And it's like, it gets real dark. Your body wouldn't be able to survive. It's like, Oh, but we have suits. Like, <laughs> yeah. Which, still dark, those suits were the ones of, like, the two people that, like, he killed. Oh, yeah, he just kept one of them. So, it's oh, like, I didn't catch on to that. I was like, oh, yeah, I yeah. thought he would have a more, like, Atlantean-themed one. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of that scene, though, that's why mm -hmm. it's a 9 out of 10. When she was in the suit, right? I'm sure he's getting sucked down the hole. Mm -hmm. The forbidden butthole to Atlantis. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> didn't like it. <laughs> didn't like the way it looked. Not a cool tunnel. Looked like the inside of intestines. I thought it was pretty sick. Didn't like it. <laughs> I thought it was well done. I liked her being in the city and like meeting all the people. It looked beautiful. Yeah. It felt like the first time we saw Wakanda. And I think they really mm. did a good job at kind of showing the parallels between Shuri mm. and Namor and the things he was going through. Yeah, for sure. I gotta say everything was done so well and they did everything obviously we'll get to the after credit scene in just a few seconds but i mean we talked about this right after the film but like favorite fight scene i didn't love the last one mm -hmm. i mean her cutting the spear and walking out of the spear fantastic mm -hmm. but the fight scene itself that's i guess one other minor complaint i wish she got her powers mm -hmm. uh, slightly sooner i would have liked to see her test them a little bit before just throwing on a suit and on a revenge mission instantly would have just seen a little bit more of that maybe could have cut back somewhere else yeah but the first initial time that they went to wakanda and attacked it all of those fight scenes are perfect all that action sequence was perfect like that's to me was the best part of the movie yeah no so you like that scene i like the other fight scene too held down the side of the ship that was cool fighting there yeah that was, that was cool i just felt the ship fight scene felt a little silly it's like you're going to fight fish people and you choose to take a boat i understand you had a sonic weapon that was giving you an upper hand but if you're fighting people who live in the water don't try and get at them with the boat not the yeah. way it would have done it <laughs> yeah probably probably true yeah but they were gonna lose Can we talk about how like there was only like 20 of them and then there was like yep. mountains and mountains of people the size of the boat also hurt their numbers i guess that was the concept they didn't want a war they wanted something to extinguish it in a sense yeah so they needed to get him and get him weakened so he could be handled so they can stop anything from happening like take the head off the rest of the army falls did you at any point think she was really gonna kill him i hoped she did it would have really put her in a different standing where she would have been black panther but she wouldn't have been an avenger she's black panther let's face it they're gonna throw on some team at some point most likely they plan to but the grounds they've laid is she's black panther she should end up on a team if she killed him it wouldn't have been that way it would have been a yeah this is someone who's very powerful and does help us but it's also someone that we don't have that relationship with as a team because she you know took a darker path in a sense i think the way they did it obviously was the disney way to do it and it was great i would have been upset if they killed him i mean i just wish she cut off all of his wings on his ankles they were disgusting all the cgi was great but i really didn't like it i was like i got the rest off and we'll be done with this bullshit the fight scenes where he was actually using them and flying i can't think of anyone that quite moved that way and took advantage of an odd place to have wings yeah no, they did a good job utilizing that and making it cool. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's a hard thing to make look cool on screen. You know what I did notice? A lot of the headdresses were made of feathers. Okay. Oh. They live under the water. Mm. Only one creature, or should I say mutant, has feathers <laughs> that would be accessible to his people. So I'm under the impression that every single headdress in the whole underwater kingdom <laughs> is just Namor's ankles. They can come out of the water. They've been they turn free. blue. They turn blue when they well, come out of the his, water. his headdresses had different colors in there. I don't know. Maybe That'd they just weird. dye his ankle feathers. That's weird. I mean, maybe he grows back because he did get one ripped off. How did you feel about that? How they blatantly were like, it was a mutant thing because like she took it when she was pregnant and I'm a mutant. Hey, it's the first mutant. I'm glad that they did some sort of nod to it. 
Yeah, I liked it. Uh, the ears know. they pointed out too, which is good. He was well done. And I love the origin that they've created for him no, through yeah. the MCU. I think Fantastic villain. Definitely won't be the end of him. He will save the day somehow. Like he said, yeah. Wakanda has no allies. I think that at one point he will be called upon and be this obnoxious of power. But yeah, let's jump right to the end credit scene for a second. Okay. T'Challa got his girl pregnant and then he turned to dust. But we know for sure that she didn't and the kid didn't being the kid's age, right? He's got to be at least like eight. Right, right. So it makes sense. But he met the kid and then, of course, passed away from nothing they're calling more than an illness in the movie. Mm -hmm. Why are they hiding the kid from Wakanda? And is this all just a play to have another young Avengers character if they decide Shuri is an Avenger or if they decide that they don't want Shuri at all? Yeah, I think it's just setting something up for the future. Just like a backup plan. Now... In the comics, obviously, as a kid was Storm. And as you reminded me, there's that next Avengers cartoon where his kid's on the Young Avengers, pretty much. He's got electric powers. So he's yeah, like Azari. Black Panther with electric. Azari, right. I mean, I don't think he's going to be him, per se. No, I don't think he can be Azari, because the electric powers just wouldn't make any sense. Right. I'd hate to say that they're, like, writing it out. I'd hope not. I hope, like, they're still going to bring Storm into being part of Wakanda, and I was going to say, what if Storm's a kid, right, and she meets this T'Challa? Oh! I mean, that would be some real <laughs> head of the time planning that's not a bad idea and i'm glad i just thought of it right now how about Ironheart? what were your feelings on that because i know some people online specifically soups got a lot of hate for saying that he was mad that her origin was forced into it mm. i didn't really feel like it was her origin i kind of just felt like it was a a stepping stone for her origin because she already had a suit yeah yeah, I don't really feel like it was forced on us either. I feel like it, it made sense. Like, it worked for the story. Right. She's and the reason that the character. everything happened, in a sense. Yeah. No, I mean, I she he... made the machine that found the vibranium. That started everything. I think it was cool. And I don't really think we need a origin, necessarily. Like, you can just kind of now go from this story and go mm -hmm. into something else. And you can still have glimpses at, like, what brought her to what she is. Like, with her dad. She mentioned her dad and right. her built that car together. Mm -hmm. I think you might see, you know, in her own something like that. But like you said, I don't think it's necessarily her origin. I think it's a stepping stone. I would think in her show, they'd have some flashbacks of some of her traumas. Because every hero has trauma, right? Yeah. And kind of show her making her Mark III, I guess it would be now. Because Mark II, she wasn't allowed to take from Wakanda, which was smart because it was ugly. <laughs> um, biggest disappointment for me was the Ironheart suit. Yeah, I thought when they were building the Midnight Angels suit... Mm -hmm. I thought that was going to be the iron part too. Oh, like yeah, here, like, make man, it yours. Gets uglier, da, 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 and then like she gets there and she's like, oh, I could work with this. And then makes right. it that. I thought that's where they were going with it. Although the Midnight Angels is a thing from the comics. So that was cool. To yeah, see that them. definitely, I don't know much, but from just the quick memory, the suit was pretty like comic accurate. Yeah. Although yeah. I think I told you this too. I thought that she was going to come save the day sooner in that suit. She made so many comments that was ugly. I think figure she'd throw it on on her own not at the very end of the movie but it made sense to have t'challa's ex-girlfriend because of the after credit scene like they needed to incorporate her in a way yeah i almost forgot she existed not gonna lie you know she visited her i was like oh wait <laughs> I forgot how badass she was. I didn't yeah. think she was, like, soldier. I thought she was just kind of, like, a spy, not, like, murder people spy. And, oh, you had said this, too, to me. The kind of reason shit went down wrong is because Shuri didn't get a chance to save that Atlantean that she shot. Yeah, yeah. So this whole movie, everything could have just been stopped, and mm -hmm. they could have probably been friends earlier on and not need to kill people for no reason. Yeah. If they just stopped for two seconds and just healed the one girl, she died and that caused this whole issue. Would have been a different vibe for sure. Still probably been yeah. a fight or something, but it was just like, well, now you did it. Yeah. The queen probably would have been alive. That was a tough one. And she drowned saving Ironheart. Like, come on. And I like the fact that Ironheart's like for the queen. Like, that was cool. Yeah. This whole Wakanda thing, you know, like Captain America, Winter Soldier, you know, they've mm -hmm. all like been there for Wakanda. Yeah. Well, I think that's what they're trying to show, too, is like once people get to know the country, everyone's like they're good people on like the rest of the world. Like they're yeah. actually good people. And that's why they're staying away from us. Because yeah. we have different that's, standards of morals. That's the same thing what Namor was saying. Overall, I think 
and I'm going to say this without actually thinking about it. I think this could easily be in a top five for me of MCU. The problem so with too. that is I think there's too many others that might push it out, partly because of nostalgia. The first Guardians, the first Black Panther, like the first Avengers, they might be up there because of nostalgia. But as far as a modern movie, if you look at the pacing, the story, the script just being rewritten because of Bozeman's death, modern, they had slow motion, the CGI was some of the best CGI I've ever seen. This movie movie was near perfect and it had a tough ground to stand on being it's off of a rewrite i feel like this movie could stand on its own as its own oh. movie. just pulled the mcu away from it and just said yep. that's my famous line is. with a lot of movies yes 100 percent. it would have just been a cool sci-fi movie yeah it was long you know it was definitely yeah. lengthy a little long some of the dialogue was like top writing some of it was kind of like i was thinking about it too it could just be because we're starting to get a little old <laughs> maybe certain I, things like didn't click the same i was happy with all of it so yeah maybe i'm just okay. getting old so going into some of the easter eggs you know the voice of her ai no i did not it's trevor noah no how do nah. i feel like i knew that i feel like i might have known that i'm a big fan of him i actually read his biography that's uh cool. yeah so he is the voice of her artificial intelligence it's fantastic anderson so, cooper making an appearance was cool too i thought that was actually funny bringing that up her ai so the fact that her mom was like oh don't you feel like you know the ai it's a little risky like that da, da, da. and sure he's like i'm confident you know oh ai won't get out of hand like it just does right. what i want it's yeah like, but it's like ultron. you had to hear about <laughs> ultron right like it wasn't yeah. kept secret <laughs> i don't know if when she was saying that it was kind of like a jab towards like tony letting ultron like out of control probably yeah you know because i mean she knows about vision mm -hmm. so she has to know about the whole situation yeah i would say it's a jab or just a jab at that movie not being that great tala's funeral in the movie includes his challenge weapons and the helmet from captain america civil war okay so during that funeral scene pretty emotional i was rubbing my eyes my tears out of there what kind of symbolically represent his victories over the years i like it and the black panther helmet was the one from civil war which is the first time we've met him mm -hmm. that's pretty cool i did like speaking of helmets the fact that she designed her uh, black panther outfit based off of killmonger instead of t'challa's which i think i said before watch you definitely said it it goes a little gold because she's a little more yep. you know rough <laughs> you 100 percent said it and uh, yeah you called that perfectly slick bell makes her live action mcu debut in wakanda forever so she is one of the two mm. specialists in the CIA expedition for the Vibranium Deposits. That actress is the voice of Poison Ivy in the Harley Quinn cartoon on HBO. Oh, shit. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting. She actually is the voice for Natasha Romanoff in Marvel's What If. Oh, that is interesting. Yeah. I like her. But, she might be uh, think, gone, though, in the MCU I now. I think that's it. Which is crazy, because I feel like she's like a bigger actress, no? I don't know why they had to throw her into the ocean the way they did. Yeah, that's right. respectful. Oh, and not for nothing, she did not reload her gun. Mm. She shot like 25 shots and didn't reload once. It was just a pistol. You're saying it wasn't accurate. Uh, yeah, a little error there. <laughs> she was reloading while she's running because she's that skilled. Maybe I missed it. I did like the sirens, by the way, how they they were singing and bringing all the men into the water. Just, yeah, that was creepy. Didn't like that. Yeah. That gave me anxiety because I don't swim well. I don't know if that's even too polite of a word. That gave me anxiety. People just walking into the water and didn't drowning. feel good. Yep, didn't like it. <laughs> this movie was dark. It was, it was it super had, dark. Like, a darker twist to it. I, I it. asked for this, though. Yeah, so you did. complaining about that at all i'm just complaining that i guess i am complaining it was sad like it wasn't like dark sad it was just like mourning like we just i felt like i was mourning people the whole movie tell you what if you were to ask me and i'm surprised that you didn't ask me this mm. which movie i like better thor or black panther or wakanda forever mm -hmm. i would actually give you wakanda forever Really? Didn't you give them both 10 out of 10? 10 screaming goats compared to 10 blue people. We have to evaluate your grading scale. <laughs> of <laughs> how high you're grading things, like you're overshooting everything and what you're choosing. Yeah. Oh, who was M'Baku going to fight at the end? I don't know. Shuri wasn't home. Who was he fighting? I don't know. He's <laughs> did, just ready. For the after credit scene, did she unknowingly go to pick up that kid so she could bring him back and M'Baku could beat the shit of that little kid? Yeah, I don't know. I'm very interested to see where that's going. Right. but something's up with that i also that, don't that understand like why bro everyone just died all these people would, yeah. you know why like you fought people? together it's like oh well i gotta take this shit now this is my shit it's like why like i thought very, we were all good very frustrating um, i love that character though i actually think he was fantastic like 
I'm glad they ended up giving him more screen time. But like, what are you doing at the end? Like, what are you trying to cause? He did a great job as a supporting character for sure. Yeah. There were some scenes with him where it was just like it was good. Like I think the first time he sees Namor, he's just like, ah, fish man. Oh, and yeah. he jumps out of the boat like ready to just like destroy him and gets no, the, his ass kicked. The best line is when they're like all arguing and he was like, Quiet, you bald headed devil. <laughs> like that yeah. was so <laughs> That was so great. Uh, he delivered it so well. <laughs> yeah. No, and even like the laughter. So he said something. Someone tells him to shut up. And instead of being like, oh, like he's like, oh, 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 yeah. oh. Like they all just like yeah. start going off, which I think it was kind of funny to see that. Especially because I think in the comics, he's known as the white gorilla. I think he's going to be potentially taking on a bigger role. So in this movie, it was revealed that more vibranium meteorites impacted Earth. Hot take. They use vibranium to explain why there are mutants. Elaborate. Black Panther getting powers. Her looking at his DNA when she's trying to recreate the fruit that gave him the powers. Okay. It's a mutation. Miss Marvel, the bangles opening up and allowing her to have her powers that she always had. Those bracelets could have been vibranium. What if everything yeah. is tied to vibranium? And it's not necessarily that the vibranium is giving powers. It's opening up the human body to reveal the powers, much like in humans are in the comics with being terraformed. Could be. They are changing things. You saw what they did with Miss Marvel. Yeah. Gave her a different type of powers. So. I would say that vibranium is going to be heavily tied into why mutants exist. That's my guess. One more easter egg that i can say i caught on my own they made sure to do it when iron heart's flying up for like the first time in her second suit iron they man show face with the same kind of layout so that was pretty cool yeah i thought it was cool the way she flew up it kind of felt like tony stark where she was flying up and they were telling her how her oxygen was going to deplete like she can't breathe up there mm -hmm. similar to when tony did the same thing you know and jarvis was warning him and then his whole armor like froze they did enough parallels with that the eye busts down at her garage they're like Oh shit, she's got the Iron Man suit. Right, yeah. So no, that was, that was cool. good. Bilbo Baggins is married to the bad woman. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Bilbo's got an ex-wife that's not so nice. Yeah. During the news broadcast in Wakanda Forever, mm. there was a ticker that said Scott Lang has published his autobiography. Oh, okay. Look out for the little guy. So it kind of fits in with everything else. Mm -hmm. It's funny how he's just like in everything. And then there was another ticker that said unknown treaty being negotiated at New Asgard. Mm. So I'm not sure what that's referencing, but. Mm. I mean, look, this is how they announced Atlantis. It was similar. Yeah. But yeah, Pally's podcast. Pally's podcast. <laughs> Namor. 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 Goes both ways. Both are correct. He goes both ways. Probably does. He's been around a long time. I feel like he if you're alive... He probably does. Wouldn't judge him for it. Yeah. Him. Like, if you're alive for, like, thousands of years... So you gotta of... test the waters, right? Test the waters. Oh, oh that was a good one. Yeah. That was good. That was good. That was good. That was good. Yeah. All right. He probably has been with fish, too. Paneloids podcast. The whales, though. They're, like, using their flippers to, like, fling people <laughs> up into the that ship. cool way to use fish. It was like, I have similar powers to Aquaman, but yeah. I'm not... Aquaman. Like, that's the way you use fish, not, like, yeah. anything Fucking else, because that would be wrong. Yes. Paneloids Podcast. Ryan Stegman. Who is he? Is he a hero? A vigilante? A criminal? Find out next time on, on Paneloids Podcast. Podcast. All right.